Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. It is Bravo Book Club. Oops. Sorry. Apologize for the echo. Um, that was my bad. Um, but welcome on in, guys. Hello, hello, hello. You ready to get it, get it, get it tonight? I hope tonight you have some no filter wine with you. If you are, let me know if you're drinking the white wine or the rosé. And which can you about tonight in Cancun for vacation? Watching the live. Welcome on in, Evelyn D. Yes, we are breaking down House of Hilton, the first four chapters over the next five weeks. So I guess. This week and four more weeks leading to the first week of June will be here live on YouTube and on Instagram every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. And we will be breaking down House of Hilton from Conrad to Paris, a drama of wealth, power, and privilege. Ooh, this is a good one, you guys. Where We learned a lot about Kathy and her mama, Big Kathy. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Parker. Hi, Mallory. Hi, Aaron D. What's going on, guys? Hi, Ioko. I'm so excited. I hope they didn't hold out on us. They did not hold out. Okay? So we're only going to break down the first four chapters and the prologue. We'll be doing about 50-ish, 50 to 60-ish pages each week. And we're going to start off with, um, like I said, the first four chapters and the prologue. House of Hilton. This, these uh, couple of chap or few chapters is where we really dive into Kathy Hilton and her mom, Big Kathy. Oh my God, you guys are dropping badges. Chrissy 37G bought three badges. Husky Love and Teacher bought three badges. You guys are so sweet. We just started. Usually I have to like beg for badges. Like I'm Kathy Hilton trying to beg a rich man to marry me. JK, JK. All right, guys. Um, hi, Val. Welcome on in on YouTube. LRP53 Pearson. What's going on? Welcome on in, my love. All right. Are you guys ready? I've held out long enough. Like I said, if you are drinking some no filter wine, let me know what you're drinking tonight. Available at nofilterwine.com. <sighs> okay. House of Hilton, prologue. So this is before we get to chapter one. So the book opens up talking all about Paris. Paris Hilton is obviously probably the most famous Hilton. Um, so she was probably, and definitely the most press worthy at the time this book came out, which what, what year did this book come out actually? This book came out in 2006. Oh, wow. So it's been a minute. Thank you as told by Tones for the two badges. I love you, Tones. I've missed you. Sad I didn't get to see you in Nashville. Um, okay, so the book opens up talking all about Paris Hilton. It gives us a little bit of insight into how the sex tape catapulted her career and how Kathy and Rick, her parents, actually supported her career following the sex tape. They apparently weren't upset about it at all. Um, if anything, Kathy was actually the one that pushed Paris into the spotlight. And uh, Rick says that he's the one that pushed, or, or not says that, but he was the one that pushed her to be like a savvy businesswoman and to try to fight for, you know, a living on her own. Um, Kathy just wanted her kids to be famous. She wanted them to be in the spotlight. She wanted them to be in the tabloid. So when the sex tape came out, Kathy really wasn't that bothered by it. If anything, she was like, well, it'll help you actually become successful and famous. Baron Paris's grandfather was actually quite pleased with all the publicity that it brought the Hilton family brand. Cause I mean, if there's attention on the Hilton name, there's attention on the hotels and it's driving money. But it's interesting. Um, interestingly enough, though, she, Paris actually isn't an heir to the Hilton throne because a lot of people refer to her as an heiress. Hopefully I'll see you in Miami. Stay tuned, Tones. Um, she's not an heir because her grandfather, who's Rick, or her grandmother, Rick's mom, actually only left her kids $60 million, and that was to be divided up amongst the eight of the grandkids, or the eight of the kids. And Baron apparently is reserving most of his fortune to go to the Hilton Foundation. And from what we're going to learn in these chapters, he's not the biggest fan of his son, Rick. Um, so Paris always knew that she wanted to create her own fortune with her own ambition. It actually speaks pretty highly of Paris, but it makes her seem like a, it kind of makes her seem like a savvy businesswoman, but also like a very ambitious person. Then we get into part one of the book and part one is called maternal roots. And it focuses a lot on Kathy Hilton and Kathy's mother, who's referred to as big Kathy. So you'll hear big Kathy and you'll hear little Kathy. 
Marilyn and Baron Hilton are Rick's parents. Pat is Baron and Marilyn's sister-in-law. She's married to Baron's brother and brother Conrad. So in the first chapter of the book, uh, we get in, we learn all about Kathy. There was apparently an incident, uh, an incident where Kathy left Paris, who was just an infant at the time, who she always called her star. I feel like we learned that at some point. Only 60 million. Yes, Elaine, only 60 million. Um, so yeah, right. 60 million is still a lot of money, even amongst eight kids. Like that's still a lot of money to, to be sending out. But apparently it seemed like neither parent really wanted to give their kids a whole ton of money. We'll get into his relationship with Rick, but it seems like both of the parents really wanted their kids to not just write off the coattails of the family name and the family business, but to actually build something for themselves. So they were giving them a little chunk of change just to help them get started so they can build an empire for themselves, which is why I think Paris's grandfather actually has a lot of respect for her because even though her mother wanted her to be famous, she did end up building, you know, a successful business for herself. But so, um, Kathy came over and she asked Pat to hold baby Paris, who she used to call star. And then Kathy apparently went out and left Paris with Pat the entire night. And Pat was pissed because she said that, you know, Kathy didn't leave her any diapers. Kathy, Kathy left her with no notes, no schedule for Paris. Um, and there was no notice of Kathy even leaving. Kathy literally just walked in, saw her mother-in-law, Marilyn, saw Pat, who I guess was her not sister-in-law, but aunt-in-law. And she was just like, hey, do you want to meet Star? Do you want to meet little baby Paris? Do you want to meet Star? Here, Pat, meet Star. And she was like, oh, hi, Star. Are you going to be a star one day? And then Kathy's going to be like, BRB, girl. And then you hear the tire streaks heading out the driveway. Says that in the book, uh, she describes Kathy as very selfish, very spoiled, and very self centered. And Marilyn, who's Rick's mom, says that she apparently does this all the time and she kind of just laughed it off. And she was like, Look, girl, you're the one that took the baby from her. This is Kathy. Kathy only thinks about Kathy. Kathy loves to party and Kathy's going to do what Kathy's going to do. Kathy also apparently pushed her weight around at the Hilton hotels, demanding special treatment. And According to hotel staff, she would leave Paris with housekeeping for days, like for like she'd be go out partying, demand that they um, that the housekeepers give her spe uh, not special treatment, but yeah, special treatment, but uh, babysit for her. And then she would leave Paris with them and she would go out partying and go on a bender or whatever she would do. Obviously, the accusations of drugs and drinking or whatever and partying. She did a lot of partying. We'll put it that way. But she loved the perks of being a Hilton. She was very unapologetic about it. But there was a strict policy, as I mentioned, that no Hilton family was family member was to get any sort of preferential treatment and definitely no special rates. Kathy didn't care. Apparently, they at one point, I think we're staying like at the Waldorf and only paid 30000 to rent it out for the year. And normally they would charge like seven figures for a room like that. But they were the worst. According to a hotel insider, they would also leave their dogs in their room for days. And so they would end up peeing and pooping all over the room because they had nowhere else to go. They wouldn't take them on any walks. That They just had zero regard for the hotel staff and for just the property in general. Uh, the insider describes them as acting like they're the imperial corps. And Kathy and Rick were apparently awful to the staff and um, they were raising Paris and Nikki to be the same. The former staff said that they used to run away when they would see them walk in. That They were like, oop, there are the Hiltons. Uh-oh, there's Paris and Nikki. We're not going to pay attention to them because they're little brats. The former hotel staff um, just was not, they were not fans of the Hiltons by any means. They were even named in 2005's 100 People Who Are Screwing Up America. And that was after they were labeled um, in Spectator Magazine, which is at, based in Britain. They were labeled as straight out of the Beverly Hillbillies. And um, I believe the reporter described them as like, they would drink really fancy champagne, but then they would have like burgers doused in ketchup that they had no elegance they had no um but then again we kind of see that right when kathy was like ordering from what was it del taco and ruth or well, i guess ruth chris is a little nicer of a spot but like you know kathy's not love you too peggy bxo thank you my love peggy bxo um but yeah apparently that's they were not very classy um and when we get into kathy's upbringing burgers with screws in them. Yeah. 
I mean, they're demons. Um, Pinhead, I don't know if I would say demons. I feel for you, Mallory. The poor puppies, poor babies. Yeah, Parker. I mean, it's not great. Poor kids and poor doggies. Both were clearly neglected. But Paris was apparently growing up to be the same way. And there were even multiple allegations, not only demanding VIP treatment, especially at the Vegas Hilton, but of peeing. Like people were accusing her of just peeing places that she would she, that like if she didn't want to wait in line to, for to use the restroom that she would just pee. She peed in a sauna. There was a cab driver that even threatened to use her DNA in court to prove that he peed in her taxi. Like it's insane. It's gross. Like she literally just had zero regard, similar to her parents, for other people's property, other people's surroundings, or just people around her. Um, Nikki, on the other hand, was actually very shy. One of her classmates or one of her former classmates, um, their mother would send them over for sleepovers and stuff. I think it sounded kind of like she felt bad for Nikki because Nikki was very shy and Paris was very extroverted and outspoken. But anyway, her mother said that every time she dropped her daughter off to hang out with Nikki, that Rick and Kathy were nowhere to be found. That if anything, there was usually just a nanny there and the nanny barely even spoke English. So she like had reservations about leaving her kids with like in this big house with nobody to take care of them and nobody to watch them. But like Rick and Kathy were gone. They were nowhere to be found. They couldn't be bothered by their kids. And so, I mean, Nikki seemed to have a good head on her shoulders and that's why this mom was like, well, you know, at least it, she's like, I told my daughter, if anything ever went down, if shit went south you give me a call and i'll be right there in a, in a second but i don't know how how comfortable i would feel just leaving my daughter in this big empty house um or how much i would even trust my kids to like if they really were in a bind to to call me you know kids are dumb or not dumb but like kids think they can handle adult situations sometimes that they usually that they might not normally be able to so, um, but when they were of age, Kath, Kathy desperately wanted her girls to be in the spotlight. Like that was a big priority until Paris started acting out. And so then Kathy ended up shipping her off to go live in Palm Desert with Big Kathy. That's what, that's how they refer to Kathy Hilton's mother was Big Kathy. So moving forward, you'll hear about Big Kathy and Little Kathy. Little Kathy refers to Kathy Hilton and then Big Kathy refers to her mother, who the book describes as a driven, ambitious stage mother from hell. Kathy told everybody that the reason Paris had gone, um, had like gone away or disappeared because everyone was like, what the fuck happened to Paris Hilton? Like she was all over town going out all the time. And now she's like totally disappeared. And Kathy said it was because she had a stalker and the stalker wouldn't leave her alone. And it was so scary. She even told a magazine that, that, you know, Paris was in danger because there was this stalker that was like harassing them. But then they interviewed hotel staff and the hotel Hilton hotel staff. And they were like, there was never a stalker. We never knew of a stalker. Trust me, if there was ever going to be a stalker, we would have heard from Kathy Hilton that there was a stalker and we needed to beef up security. And not only that, but we needed to protect the residents of our hotel that we would have absolutely gone above and beyond to make sure the Paris Hilton didn't have a stalker and that the Hiltons were taken care of. Like they pushed their weight around. They would not allow for something like this. So, I mean, they did everything else for the Hilton. So why wouldn't they make sure that there was extra security if there really was a stalker? But Kathy wanted to see Paris become a star. Probably that's probably why she called her star since she was a baby. So she pushed Paris into fame, which Paris later attributed her success to Big Kathy because she had to go and live with Big Kathy in Palm Desert. So Big Kathy also pushed what she wanted for little Kathy also for for Paris. And at that point, Paris was already notable. She already had the Hilton family name. She was already a socialite. So for Big Kathy, it wasn't that big of a deal. But Big Kathy was apparently not a fan of Little Kathy, Kathy Hilton, Paris's mother. Big Kathy always said that her daughter, Little Kathy, was a terrible mother and she never paid attention to her kids, which is quite the opposite of Big Kathy because Big Kathy was very micromanaging. Big Kathy always had like, you know, her hand on their throats, telling them what to do and directing every single move that they ever made. But she says that Kathy Hilton's pretty smart, is is pretty, and she's a pretty savvy businesswoman. But she's a terrible mother that only that never pays attention to her kids and only started paying attention to them once they became famous. Which, I mean, shit, shots fired to throw at your daughter. 
There's also mention of Paris briefly staying at a correction school in Utah, which I guess we can now assume was Provo Canyon, which was the basis of her documentary, This is Paris. But it also makes me rethink the entire This is Paris documentary and the Peacock series Paris in Love and whether or not those were genuine or they were additional attempts to capitalize off of like some sort of trauma to continue to cash in and elongate their fame. Because it seems like this family was very fame hungry. It seemed like Paris was fame hungry. Her mother pushed her into fame her mother pushed her into fame so i mean i mean or maybe paris in love came as an attempt to do just that after paris did her this is paris documentary and kathy was more of a driving force behind paris in love maybe to rehab the image maybe to reclaim the reclaim the narrative I have questions about it all i always had a theory that the reason kathy hilton joined um Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was to rehab her image from the portrayal that she got in Paris's documentary, This Is Paris. So it may be possible that Paris kind of went rogue with This Is Paris. And then all of a sudden, Kathy's like, all right, we need to get this train back on track. It's good that everybody loves Paris right now. It's good that, you know, she seems endearing and human to these people. So let's capitalize off that by doing Paris in Love, where we document her wedding. We're in the series. You do kind of see, I mean, even though the series was kind of cheeky and kind of cute, you do kind of see that Paris wasn't really interested in marrying this guy um carter like there were moments where like she didn't really want to do it but she kind of felt like she had to do it and there definitely seemed to be a pressure for her to get married and then once we dive into big kathy a little bit more in the next couple of chapters you're going to see how that actually comes down from her from kathy hilton's mom big kathy so in chapter two, we dive deeper into Kathy Hilton's upbringing. Her mother, Big Kathy, really wanted her to be an actress. She pushed her to be a model, but she just wasn't bankable. And according to people in the industry, she didn't have that it factor. So she never really made it, especially in comparison to her younger sisters, Kyle and Kim Richards, who we know from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. They were the much more successful ones in the biz. Kathy pushed them and she pushed them, or Big Kathy pushed them and she pushed them very hard. She put them in everything from dance lessons to swim lessons and constantly wanted to pimp them out, constantly was trying to book jobs for them. And I don't know if that was really just with the blind ambition of trying to make them famous or she was trying to provide for them because we do know there was American Woman, which is the series that Kyle Richards ended up producing for, what was it, the Paramount, Paramount Plus, whatever their streaming network was. Um, she produced American Woman that was based off of, her, off of her mother. And it looked like, you know, her mother was very ambitious and her mother pushed the kids into acting so that they can provide for them. And that was more of a means to an end. Whereas in the book, it makes it seem like it's less of a means to an end and more of a means to fame. Um, she was very adamant that her daughters marry rich and have lots of babies. And that's what you got to do. You got to find yourself a rich man and have a bunch of kids with him because then if things ever go south, at least you got the child support and you got, you know, you got the, th ooh, beautiful Rose01 on Instagram says, my uncle dated Kim for a while. One Christmas, we walked into his house with Kim and all of her kids were there. Interesting. American woman was brilliant. My generation. Yes, but it doesn't sound like American woman was truly about Big Kathy. And it makes me wonder, maybe that's why Kim and Kathy stopped talking to Kyle after they started talking about or after she started telling them she wanted to do this series. It seems like they all had a very different relationship with Big Kathy, but it would make sense that they wouldn't want like if their mother, their mother was truly the monster that this book describes her to be. Mm. Kenny Sontag, do you believe Rena? I do believe Rena. I believe that Kathy made racist and homophobic slurs while she was in a meltdown in Aspen. So let's get into Big Kathy. Um, cause even after little Kathy married Rick Hilton and became Mrs. Hilton, big Kathy would still call her every day and give her marching orders and, you know, see how things were going. And Kat, uh, little Kathy had to report to her mother what was going on in the marriage. And then big Kathy would direct her as such. And it's interesting. And it makes me now think that maybe this is why Kathy Hilton has like this weird attachment to her mother. Cause remember at the, at the last reunion, she was like bawling when her mother came up as if her mom died last week. And her mom's been, her mom passed away many, many years ago. So for me, I'm thinking because she had such a tight hold on the girls, maybe 
Kathy feels like she's lost without her mother, or maybe she doesn't know how to navigate life without her mother dictating what she has to do with her life. Maybe it's guilt over never really meeting her mother's approval. Like it all sounds very deep. It sounds like we need to go to a therapist. We need to realign some chakras and like really figure out what this attachment is because their relationship seemed very codependent and very much dependent on Kathy's approval and what Kathy wanted of or big Kathy's approval, sorry, and what big Kathy wanted of her, her three girls. It also talks about how she was married four times and Kathy Hilton never actually what her name was never actually Kathy Richards, even though she always used Kathy Richards. She was actually Kathy Avanzino, Avanzino, A-V-A-N-Z-I-N-O, Avanzino. And she, in the book, it says that she was conceived in the back of a 1957 black Chevy convertible, hardly a, um, you know, hardly a story you really want to tell, but her fa- her biological father was Larry Avanzino. He didn't have such a great reputation. He was a bit of a bad boy. And she never, I, to my knowledge, never knew her father, Larry, and never spoke of him, never used his last name. Um, and like they really distanced themselves from that family. But she was primarily raised by Big Kathy's second husband, Ken Richards. And apparently she'd flex them around town by, or she'd... Um, Big Kathy would um, like try to, she was very much the one in control and, and the dominant one, but she would like flex her power, not just around the girls, but around her husbands. And she would use sex or withholding sex as like a manipulation tactic. And even her last husband claims that she would withheld sex throughout their entire marriage. And she would use that to maintain control over the men in her life. Eventually, Big Kathy stopped trying to get little Kathy into showbiz and ended up pushing her to just marry rich, which was her golden rule, marry rich and have a lot of babies, but the golden rose to marry rich. And I guess she realized her daughter didn't have a career in any sort of like acting or stardom in any sort of way. So she was like, look, you're pretty. The best thing you can do is just marry a guy with a lot of money. And according to her, her classmates, Kathy wasn't very bright and not only cared about or all she cared about was going out and being seen and partying, which her mother was fine with as long as, you know, she bagged herself somebody rich along the way. She didn't care what she did. But Ken Richards, who was her stepfather, who, like I said, was the one who primarily raised her, he said that she was lazy. And he was like, oh, my God, she never did anything. All she cares about is going out during the day. All she does is sleep. So hi, Lauren. Welcome in on YouTube. Welcome on in, guys. Welcome on in. If you're just joining, we are recapping House of Hilton, which is dives into the Hilton family dynasty. And we're learning a lot about Kathy Hilton and her Hilton and the marriage to Rick. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But like I said, um, little Kathy was just interested in going out and her mother didn't care as long as she found herself a good man. And by good man, we mean very wealthy man. She would even critique little Kathy's outfits to ensure that they would better help her land a man. And little Kathy was known for being flirt flirtatious and for dressing very provocatively. Um, but she never put out. In fact, her classmates labeled her as a PT, which is a prick tease. Um, I mean, yeah, she would give them blue balls essentially, but it was a tactic that people assumed came from her mother, give enough and hold out to really string him along, but don't give enough to make sure he's going to commit to you beforehand or don't give enough. Yes. Yeah, so that he commits to you beforehand. But apparently little Kathy had a major ego because all her mother did was build her up and tear her down. But nobody really got to know the real little Kathy because she was always on. They described her as always kind of being a character. And even when she would go to parties and stuff and people would be smoking pot, that she didn't do it, presumably out of fear of breaking character and letting people see the real her. But at this point, I don't even know if she knows who the real her is. She's just so used to playing a character. See, I want this book to be as I want this book to be as raw as this is Paris. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be pretty raw. It's not coming from any of the Hiltons themselves, but it does seem to be pretty raw. Uh, as told by Tones says, yeah, they have the same mom for sure. But I was always curious. They had different fathers. Yeah, apparently Kathy's dad was um, not a great guy and they distanced themselves for good reason. And they try to keep that under wraps. And even his family later came out anonymously in the book and talked about how they were always kind of annoyed that their family name never came up, but she always used the Richards name. And now she obviously always throws around the Hilton name. Then we get into chapter three and here's where things get dark if they haven't already. 
Um, so one of Big Kathy's friends is interviewed in the book, and she details conversations remembering uh, having come, or she remember details having conversations with Big Kathy over Little Kathy's dating habits. And apparently, there was a phone call that took place where she reveals that Big Kathy called her to discuss some concerns she had over an affair that Little Kathy had, and that affair was with one of the Jackson Five brothers. But Big Kathy was torn about it because she knew that obviously dating one of the Jackson 5 brothers could really help bolster little Kathy's career. But the real, came, the real concern came from the fact that she didn't want her daughter dating someone that was black. Thank you, Aussie Berry, for the two badges. Hi, Aussie Berry. How you doing, my love? Um, yeah. So when you hear these accusations about Kathy Hilton being racist or Paris Hilton dropping racial slurs from her friends, um, it seems like it may trickle back to this. There may be some, obviously this was a different, a different time. You know, racism was, I don't want to say a lot more common and definitely wasn't right, but it's like people's mentalities were different before. That doesn't make it right. It's absolutely wrong. I want to clarify that. But, you know, these are things that people said in that time. Still wrong, but these are things that, you know, people would have concerns about. Her friend, obviously, now in the book in 2006, was like, oh, my gosh, I was clenching my pearls, and I didn't, I can't believe she said that. But that was a genuine concern of Big Kathy. She didn't want her daughter dating somebody that was colored, which is... Uh, insane um but it was later revealed that it wasn't michael jackson but one of his brothers that kathy supposedly was talking to um because apparently there was another conversation that had happened years later where michael was in the press um about you know the the molestation accusations and um um she ended up bringing up to Big Kathy, oh, but that's not true, right? Because he, you know, he's not gay. He had an affair with, or he was like sleeping or talking to, to little Kathy. And she was like, oh, no, 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 it wasn't Michael Jackson. It was one of his brothers, which is very, very interesting. Hi, Angelique. My daddy never happy I dated white boys. Oh, okay. Doesn't make him racist, but it's not cool. Well, thank you for sharing that, Angelique. Um, but anyway, Back to, okay, so in addition to her concerns with, you know, dating one of the Jackson brothers, there was even like this sex stuff where Kim and Kyle's stepmother reveals in the book that Big Kathy, or this is Ken. So after Ken left Big Kathy, he got remarried and his next wife is in the book, is interviewed in the book. And she reveals that Big Kathy reached out to a younger man one time to help teach little Kathy about sex and how to do sex right, which is just creepy that like you're literally soliciting some young man to help your daughter learn how to have good sex or learn how to be better at having sex so that she can help land a rich man by giving him good sex. It's creepy. So when Ken Richards found out about that and Ken is Kyle and Kim's father and big Kathy's second husband, when Ken found out he was pissed, like he was real pissed. And he was like, you can like, this is disgusting. You cannot be doing this with your, with our daughter. But then big Kathy was like, you know what? You need to mind your own business because she's not our daughter. She is my daughter, not your daughter. And it was like, oof, out shots fired. But like, if he helped raise her, obviously like he would, care about her and he would care that like she's pimping her daughter out to learn how to have sex and to marry a rich man like it's just it's wild i agree with you tones this book has me spinning book club is on fire tonight yeah it has me spinning i was reading it like what yes lauren that's disgusting val pimping out her kids yeah yep coffee buzz a pretty mess shit now i'm singing erica's songs it's expensive to be me. Eh, eh. It's expensive to be Kathy. Eh, 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 eh. But in addition to like just being awful with her own daughter, she apparently liked collecting pretty women. Um, be it as fr be it her own friends or just other young women that needed like a motherly figure. She definitely seemed to like being a mother hen and taking in young pretty girls and helping them like navigate life or helped 
gui- guiding them in life and she would help set them up with wealthy men. And so she seemed, and some people compared it to like a madam, like Heidi Fleiss, but she wasn't actually running like an escort service and nobody was paying for sex. But like, I think in her weird twisted head, she was like, I'm helping all these pretty women find men that they're deserving of. And like, she found herself as like a connector it's very weird and it's very convoluted and people in the book have very mixed feelings about it. Um, like I said, some people felt like she was like running a service, but others, I don't know. That was weird. It was weird. I don't know what book will be able to follow up after all this juicy tea, right? What was the wildest? Uh, what's wild is that big Kathy did all of this shit, but yet they still worship her. That's interesting too. Remind, if I don't, we'll bring that, we'll circle back to that Aussie Berry. Um, it, so chapter four, which is the last chapter we'll break down today, we open up with little Kathy getting an offer to do Playboy, which she seriously considered doing because she wanted the money. She wanted to buy a car. Her uncle actually gave her a car that was mentioned in the last chapter. It was a little Fiat, but it wasn't like the glam Lux car that she wanted. So she like was excited about it and then drove it for a day and then was like, I don't want this anymore. I'm done. I need something better. I, I need that high life and a Delvey. So her mother didn't seem to care and actually was open to the possibility of, do, of her doing Playboy one for the exposure and two because they were willing to pay her twenty five thousand dollars. And little Kathy obviously wanted to buy herself a car, but eventually little Kathy was talked out of doing it. And instead she was going to pursue a career in music and she was going to be a star, honey, a star. Though there appeared to be some sort of resentment towards her sisters, Kyle and Kim, for their successful acting careers, it seemed like Kathy was determined to make something of herself. She was going to be somebody, you know, if she couldn't be an actress and she couldn't be a model, then she was going to, she had a voice and she was going to be doing something with that. And she had a great voice. People said that her mom had a great voice, Big Kathy had a great voice, but that little Kathy had a really great voice, um, enough to really be able to pursue a music career until, sure enough, as her mother wanted, she found herself a rich man to marry. And then threw all of those dreams in the trash because she finally found her goal. So when it came, uh, when she came across Rick Hilton, it was like hitting the lato. She was very excited. The Hilton dynasty, she was ready for it. It moved fast and Kathy definitely kept her eye on the prize and her mother couldn't be any prouder. I mean, probably prouder than Kyle and Kim. She's like, yes, one of the girls landed a rich man. I mean, that's not to say Kyle and Kim didn't land anyone, any rich husbands, um, because they did. And her mom would like boast about how collectively, you know, her daughter's husbands are have like a worth of like 13 billion or something like that. Um, But there was only one issue. And that was that Big Kathy at the time was seen a mobster. And she knew that she had to distance herself from this guy to ensure that it wouldn't screw anything up or scare off Rick Hilton or bring any bad press to the Hilton family name. So once they and once they got married, Kathy and Rick, then she was able to take up her relationship with said mobster, who was Jack Katane. She even joked, like she would joke to her friends, literally, and she would say, like, if you ever need anybody taken care of, Jack is your guy which everyone was like, ha, 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 But they were also kind of like, um. So guys, if I ever go out, if I'm ever taken out, just know it was probably by Big Kathy and her mobster boyfriend, her mobster husband, because she did marry him. Um, but Big Kathy loved to show off how well her daughter was doing. She would bring her friends over to come and see her house, like just to pop in and see how great everybody was doing. But Baron Hilton apparently wanted nothing to do with Big Kathy because she was a drunk Um Baron was the grandfather. He wanted nothing to do with her. Um, his mother was apparently a drunk and it triggered him or whatever. And he was like, I don't fuck with Big Kathy. And other members of the family immediately saw little Kathy as a total gold digger. But listen, she's a gold digger that was living the life that she manifested. She secreted the shit out of this Hilton dynasty. And I mean, if, if people say the manifestation doesn't work, Kathy Hilton is living proof. But after, even after Rick got his first like big real estate commission, he used it to buy Kathy a Rolls Royce. So she, he definitely was whipped. He actually wasn't interested in any of the high society life. Like he could not be bothered by being seen. He couldn't be bothered by even living the the overtly fancy life. He grew up with it. So to him, it didn't really matter. It wasn't important. 
it wasn't anything that he ever like strived for because it was always just available to him. So to him, it wasn't very exciting. Whereas Kathy, on the other hand, she wanted it and she pushed him at every chance and pulled him out of his comfort zone to make sure they were seen, to make sure they were fine dined, to make sure they were living the life. But Rick was apparently timid and Kathy was just like her mother, Big Kathy. She was the dominant one and she was determined to one day be the Mrs. Hilton, the only Mrs. Hilton putting Rick's mom out of a title. I'm pretty sure she would have hired her mom's mobster boyfriend, you know, to help things along, help move things, you know, in the direction that she wanted them to go. But she and Rick were convinced that they were that he was going to be the next Mr. Hilton, the head of the empire. So why wouldn't she become the next big Mrs. Hilton? So she used to she used that like foretelling to push her weight around, as I mentioned earlier. Like she'd be like, Well, my husband's gonna be the next Mr. Hilton. He's the heir to the throne. He's gonna be the heading all of this. So of course you need to give us all of the perks. But Baron was always very mindful that no kids and no grandkids were allowed to use the name to get preferential treatment, that even when Paris tried, because she often demanded it, that a lot of times he would make sure that the staff would push back on that and that Paris wasn't even able to, to cash in on the family name, even though she was the most notable or the most infamous, I should say. But Kathy Hilton sure tried. She'd often get into screaming matches with Rick's father and they would fight over stupid shit. And she was always like, you're such a terrible father and you're such a terrible grandfather, even though based off of the stories about her leaving her kids with the hotel staff and leaving her dogs in the room for days, like it's, she's not really anyone to critique on anybody's parenting. But when asked, uh, what, uh, when Rick was, or when they asked uh, Baron why Rick wasn't going to be taking over the Hilton Empire, Baron said, if he can't control his wife, what makes you think he can run my hotels? So there was clearly some serious beef with Kathy Hilton and Baron Hilton. I mean, and if you really are trying to be the heir to the dynasty, why are you going to fight with Baron? Like, Baron's the key holder. I mean, I wonder what's going to happen if and when Baron passes. What Baron is, is Baron still alive? I know this book came out a long time ago. Baron might be dead. We should probably fact check that. Baron might be dead by now, but we're just going based off of the book, House of Hilton. Today we broke down chapters, the prologue in chapters one through four. Next week we'll be breaking down another set of chapters. So get ready. Oh, he's dead now. Okay, so it's. I'm curious as to whether or not Rick has now taken over the family dynasty. Sorry, I should have done that before, but I literally was reading the last sentence up until like the minute before having to tape this because um, it's been a busy couple of days. This is an amazing bedtime story. So happy I finally caught a live. Welcome on in, Catherine. Catherine Elaine. Thank you for joining me. Yes, Parker said he's dead. So does anybody know? So if anybody has access to Google right now, do they know if he ended up taking over the family throne? Uh, okay, Aussie Bear, you said what's wild is that Big Kathy did all this shit, yet they still worship her. I think it's like a weird, like dependent relationship that they have. I think they like, listen, Kathy Hilton still like balls when she talks about her mother, even though her mother passed away many, many years ago. But at the reunion, she was just like sobbing about how much she missed her. But I think it's more it's deeper. And it's more psychological. Like I think with with Kathy Hilton, with her, she probably feels lost without her mother. Oh, my God. Thank you, Angelique. Angelique dropped five bucks in the YouTube super chat, the book club. I didn't know I needed. Yes, Angelique. Um, we love that for you, my love. Um, guys, if you are sipping on some no filter wine, let me know. Are you drinking some white? Or are you drinking some rosé? Today I've got out cut down my drinking or what? Or what? Yes, Val, Par um, Val Porter. Um, yeah, he donated 97% of his fortune like his father did. Yeah, see, that makes sense. Val Porter on YouTube says Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, Val, I agree. It definitely seems like Stockholm Syndrome. Um, but like with Kathy, I think because she was so used to her mother dictating her life to her, maybe that's why, you know, she misses her so much is maybe she feels lost without her. And it's like a weird codependent relationship. We also don't really know what her relationships were with Kim and Kyle. They may have been better with Kim and Kyle because Kim and Kyle were the successful ones and the famous ones early on. So it's possible that Kim and Kyle maybe got an easier road, whereas Kathy got the tougher road because she was the oldest and there was a lot more pressure on her and she wasn't becoming famous so easily. And she didn't have a solid acting career. So, you know, lots of... um you know, lots of possible theories. 
but I definitely think Stockholm syndrome for sure. Um, Aussie Berry, little Kathy has always been a social climber. So I guess it's good for her for landing herself the Hilton. Yep. She did it. Love you, Zach. Love you, Storm Doris. I love you, my dear. Did they mention Kathy and the Jacksons? Yes, they did mention Kathy and the, and the Jacksons. We talked about that. Um, the only Mrs. Hilton is the matriarch is BB Hilton. She's 90 and I am her spiritual advisor. Oh, hi, Dr. Evie. Well, thank you for joining on in. Yes, BB is mentioned in the book as well. I didn't realize BB was still alive, but apparently they, Marilyn was the Mrs. Hilton at the time. Um, and Kathy wanted to stomp on Marilyn, who's Rick's mother, so that she could become um, the next. Hilton. Um, Kenzie says mostly Francesca Hilton, who is disowned by her mama, Zsa Gabor, and senior Hilton living in a modest but run down $3 million home in Laurel Canyon. Interesting. Um, at the time of her death, my friend Miriam was right across the street, neighbors, and I met Francesca. Interesting. Wow. Um, Oh, fuck. Um, I always heard that Kyle was the fave, even though Kim was more successful. That's possible. And Kyle seems to be the most endearing and like loving. Um, Rick isn't wealthy because he was a Hilton, but rather his real estate. Yeah, his real estate business, which is possibly why um, why we know that there was some beef between Kyle and Mauricio and Kathy and um, Rick. Because there was like that beef of him breaking off and going off and doing his own thing. Um, had to come here to say hi to Storm. Hi, Elaine. Well, thank you for jumping over from YouTube to come say hi to Storm Doris. What does Bobby have to say about Kathy? Um, Bobby isn't in, doesn't say anything about Kathy and or BB doesn't say anything. I think you you mean BB. Um, she doesn't specifically say anything about Kathy, but she is mentioned. BB is mentioned in the book. Um, Gemini Perry. Uh, uh, Gemini Patriot, sorry, it says, seems like Kathy is using her daughter's playbook in winning fans by dumbing herself down. Yeah, it's the total simple life, you know, matriarch edition, a simple life geriatric edition. I would have never known she was slick, especially for how she portrays herself on the show and on Watch What Happens Live appearances. Yep, I agree. As Told by Tone says, in this book, is this book kind of like Diamonds and Rosé, where it's written from perspectives of different people being involved? Um... Di not all diamonds and rosé was clippings of interviews where it was literally just a collection of interview sound bites that were all kind of pieced together to tell the story. This one is a biography. So it's written by Jerry um, Oppenheimer, who Kathy Hilton says, like, if you ever work on this book or anybody that gives an interview, you'll be blacklisted from the Hilton clan. I'm like, girl, you're like barely a Hilton. Calm down. I thought she was the Hilton. And then I learned homegirl's hardly a Hilton. And when she had her NBC show, I want to be a Hilton, which was like a Donald Trump style apprentice style show about wanting to be a Hilton. Apparently a lot of the other Hiltons did not like that. They hated it. They clenched their pearls. They scoffed. They thought they think she's tacky. They, the Hilton family does not like Kathy. Let's be clear about that. Um, but tones, it's not like diamonds and rosé where it's like someone's name and then all of these transcripts from an interview. It's like an actual book book, but you know, it's a biography. So there's a storytelling piece to it. And then there are interweavings of, you know, different, um, excerpts from interviews with people that knew the Hiltons where they kind of shared their stories, but it's not laid out the same way as in all diamonds and rosé proud of Paris for doing the work against high school teen abuse. I mean, sure. Um, Elaine gave three badges. Thank you, Elaine. I love you, my dear. Um, they really need a part two. Who needs a part two of diamonds and rosé? Uh, they didn't, uh, how could you not like Kathy? and her TV dinner tray lifestyle. I mean, yeah, Beverly Hillbillies, they said it in the book, you know? It is what it is. It's so funny how all of these Bravo YouTubers and pod podcasters, except you and Jacques, lick Kathy's ass. Listen, Parker, I actually think Kathy's character is enjoyable. I loved Kathy at the beginning, too. I stopped licking her ass once I realized, you know, her ass don't taste that great. It's actually a little sour. Um, once you get a taste and then you you realize, you know, what she had for lunch, then you're kind of like, oh, never mind. So, no, I'm not um, not eating her ass. 
not loving a lot of the accusations. Um, Nikki Hilton didn't dumb herself down. No, she didn't. If anything, she seems to be the most real and the most genuine. Um, geriatric edition, yeah. Uh, Coffee Buzz says, Zach, have you ever done a live chat room about your books? No, I have not. Um, I don't think anybody would be interested in my books. My last book was written, was published, what, back in 2014? So it's been a long time. Um, and I don't think the topics are as applicable. And what would we talk about, about the books? Um, I, I haven't, I probably won't. I wrote them when I was very young that it's nothing I choose. It's like going through your old diary. You know, why would you want to go back and read through your own diary entries? Like, it's just, it's not, thank you, next. Sorry, not going to happen. Um, but I am working on my fifth book right now. And that one I think would be fun to do like some sort of live book club or something about if and when, you know, we get to that point where it comes out uh, or when the, it's published. Um, back to the lick my ass merch. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Nikki Hilton playbook is seen and not heard. She was legit mute. Like she was anti Paris, which as a playbook in and of itself. Yeah, I think she was smart. She was like, I don't want to be part of this. I don't need to be a part of any of this. Um, BB Hilton will go on housewives of Beverly Hills and will tell the truth. Good for her. I hope she does. Zach, do you like Kyle? I do like Kyle. I like Kyle a lot. Uh, Dr. Evie, Andy Cohen is missing ratings. Get B.B. Hilton on. I would, I mean, but B.B. Hilton is 90 years old. What are they really going to do with her at 90 years old? I think Kathy would shut that down. This is all so interesting. It's fascinating, Jenny. Um, that's when I said tones. Yes, that would be awesome. Yes, do a book club on the new book. Yes, I will do a book club on my new book. I have zero interest in revisiting any of my old books. Um, listen, I wrote them. I put them out into the into, out into the world. People like them. The last book still seems to be selling and people are still really responding to it. I'm just in a different place in my life and I'm in a different chapter of my life and going back and revisiting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Want to hear about your new book? Yes. In time. I will share in time. When I can share, I will share. Um, I recently watched the first, but it'll be interesting. There'll be a lot of, you know, celebrity stories about the celebs that I used to work with, reality stories, tidbits that you've gotten from the podcast. Like, it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm really proud of this new book. Um, I recently watched the episode, the first episode of I Want to Be a Hilton, just to see the clip of Kyle with her old nose, and the show was pretty cringe. Yeah, even Kathy herself admitted that the show fucking sucks. Like, that was her literal quote, was the quote, the show fucking sucks. She said that to a reporter, which, I mean... Why would you say that about your own show? At least like do the Bethany thing and be like, I love this. I can do this forever. It's a dream job. And then, you know, when it doesn't work out, be like, oh, I hated it. Um, whatever. But yeah, um, I would totally be interested in that. I love Zach and Jacques see through the bullshit and don't just regurgitate Twitter hot takes. I love Jacques. I was actually just on Jacques' podcast. So if you guys are new to it, it's called Unpopular, um, the Unpopular Podcast with Jacques Peterson. Um, I want to be a Hilton was cringier than Tinsley show. Paris also had a similar show to that on MTV. Remember, I want to be Paris's BFF. Or I want to be Paris's next best friend. It was right after the simple life and her fallout with Nicole Richie. And then she did that show, which was bad. Kathy versus BB. Believe me, ha BB hands down. Listen, bring BB on. I wish we could. Kathy shouldn't have joined Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It's ruining her rep. I agree. It is ruining her rep. Kyle is the most well-adjusted. Yes, she is. I think she broke a lot of her mom's advice. She didn't marry, like Mauricio wasn't a mega millionaire. He was in real estate, but they built a lot. And when they left, they had to build their real estate company together and good for them. Now they are uber rich. Um, well, can't wait for your next book. Thank you, King uh, Caesar. What about when Kathy allegedly beat up and drugged the first Richard's wife? We haven't gotten there yet. No spoilers. Let's pour. We only did the first three chapters. Um, Big Kathy put screws in a sandwich for Ken Richards' daughter. Yeah, guys, we're going to get to... We're on chapter four. Let's not ruin any spoilers for anybody that hasn't read the book yet or wants to be part of book club. I'm sure there are lots more juicy tales in here. I've already heard of some of them. I can't wait to read them. Let's not spoil them just yet. I love the E2 Hollywood story about Paris Hilton. Kyle had her old nose on that show too. Thank you, Lauren, for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, Alicia says, even in the Paris documentary, she was rude to Paris and I didn't like that. Oh, Nikki. Yeah. 
damn, that's some tea. There's a lot of tea tonight, Storm Doris. Let's do the next three chapters now. No, I would I would have to literally sit here and read them to you. Chapter five, the story of Paris Hilton's colorful maternal roots begins in America's heartland, Nebraska, then shifts east to the Tony town of Manasset on Long Island's Gold Coast. Paris's maternal great grandfather, Big Ed Dugan, Duggan, was an attorney in Omaha and during the Great Depression sought and won elections in the Nebraska state legislature, where he later served as chairman of the Judiciary Committee and sometimes sat in as the Speaker of the House. That's all you're getting until next week. Um, I've missed Bravo Book Club. I can't stand Vanderpump Rules, so I skipped the last few weeks. Oh, Stassi's book. Stassi's book, Parker, you'd be surprised, was really good. And I actually really enjoyed it and thought it was very endearing and really enjoyed her. Thank you. No spoilers. I'm reading just enough to get through each week's book club. Yay. I believe we're breaking down five more chapters for next week, Erin. Um, sorry, I have it written on my phone and I can't check my phone because we're in the middle of the Instagram Live, so I can't tell you. Um, but yeah, what's uh, what about their older brother, Conrad? He's the craziest. Oh, I'm sure. Nikki was rude to Paris about maybe she doesn't want to start a family. I mean, listen, they're sisters. Sisters are going to be rude to each other. Zach, when is your birthday? You're a Gemini. Yes, I am a Gemini. My birthday's coming up in a couple weeks. My birthday is June 15th. I think it's like in the middle. It's like on a Wednesday. Oh, so, oh, if it were on a Tuesday or a Thursday, we would have done a live together. Or maybe we would have skipped that week. I don't know. I don't mind being live with you guys on my birthday. But my birthday is June 15th. Yes, I am a Gemini. Um, and no, we won't be live that day. Unless I get drunk. Um, can you post on your Twitter what we are reading for next week? Yes, I'll post on Twitter and on Instagram after this, the chapters for next week. But so far, this week's chapters were super juicy. It's Miss Juicy, baby. Oh, my God. I'm a Gemini too, Zach. I'm June 12th. Oh, well, happy early birthday to you, my fellow Gemini Storm Doors. I knew I liked you for a reason. Um, yay. Good to know. Aquarius. Good for you, Alicia. Um, I love how everyone's talking about Kyle's old nose. Uh, so we will be live that day. No, we won't be live that day, Russ. My birthday is on a Wednesday. We don't go live on Wednesdays. Okay, any other thoughts, feelings, vibes, questions before we wrap? So I love my Geminis and Libra air signs. Yay, thank you. Ooh, Elaine's also an Aquarius. Gemini twins, this is some good tea. Yes, it is. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, shall we wrap? Are we good? Do we have any other questions, thoughts, feelings, vibes? If not, then we are going to close today's Bravo Book Club. I love Kyle. Thanks, Parker. I love Kyle, too. All right. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Parker. Thank you, Coffee Buzz. Thank you, Lauren. Who else was in the live chat today? Um, Catherine Elaine. Thank you for joining. Miss Bougie. Is it? I'm assuming that's Bougie, not Boogie. Miss Bougie. Gemini Parrot. Sorry, Gemini Patriot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dustin Butler. Thank you guys for joining today's live. I love you. I appreciate you. Love your podcast. Oh, thank you, Dr. Evie. Let's see if we can get BB on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, D. Marie Ransom. D. Marie Ransom. I love it. Thank you for the two badges, my dear. I appreciate you. I love you guys. If you dropped a super chat, who dropped the super chat? Let's give you another shout out for dropping a super chat. Angelique on Inst on YouTube dropped a super chat. She said this is the book club she didn't know she needed. And I love it. Thank you, D. Marie Ransom. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the badges. I appreciate all the super chats. You guys in the bomb.com. And yeah, we will be back. Next. Well, we'll be here this Thursday because we do Thirsty Thursday every Thursday night where we break down whatever tea is live, happening live. So I will be here on YouTube, youtube.com slash just plain Zach. And I'll be here on Instagram at no filter with Zach so that we break down this Thursday's tea. And then book club will return with more House of Hilton next Tuesday at 530 p.m. Pacific, 830 Eastern. This book was worth the wait. I agree. I wanted to save it for when Beverly Hills started to air so that we were ready for all the Kathy Hilton stuff. So we'll continue to break this down over the next five weeks, and then all of it will be out there in time for the Kathy Hilton Aspen meltdown. It is interesting, though, because Erica has talked about how she doesn't know what will actually be aired from the Aspen trip, and she's a little skeptical as to what they will air to protect Kathy Hilton. 
Um, which I found very interesting that that was one of her concerns. So they're like, did this happen? Did she say this? Was it about a homophobic slur? She's like, I'm not saying anything of that nature. You're just going to have to watch and we're just going to see what they actually end up airing. So it seems like her and a few other people are alluding to the fact that they think that Kathy Hilton might get protected in the edit. Who knows? They didn't protect Denise Richards. So we'll have to see. Oh, BB's book is out. BB has a book too. All right, Dr. EB, email me the link to BB's book so I can check that out. All right, guys, love you, appreciate you. I will talk to you this Thursday. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you, appreciate you.